Looking for some amazing leg exercises to take your training to the next level? Then you're gonna love these eight leg exercises I'm gonna share in this video. These moves take those fundamental movement patterns and add a little twist to the basics to help you progress through not only adding loads, but also different types of tension, different loading placements, different bases of support, and even different ranges of motion. There are so many ways to vary movements to match our specific needs and goals. With these tweaks, you can even impact the specific muscles involved and how much they're recruited. And it's key we find different ways to to progress, especially the longer we've been training. Hey guys, it's Corey from Redefining Strength, where we help you move, look, and feel your best at any and every age. While we're never above the basics, and we should always return to them, we can make little tweaks to movements to keep our training fresh and interesting, while creating progression in new and different ways. Especially the longer we've been training, we need to find new ways to create progression to drive muscle growth. These movement variations can also be fun as we get older. They're not just us trying to beat our bodies up by trying to force heavier loads. They can also help us if we've hit a stick point with weights that we can move during a specific movement. That's why I wanted to share these eight lower body exercises that help you create progression in new and different ways. Move number one, the cable step up. Step ups are a great unilateral leg exercise to help correct imbalances and strengthen both sides independently. And while they work your entire leg, you can make them more glute intensive by changing how you load them down. By using a cable anchor down low to apply resistance to the movement, you can emphasize the resistance on the drive up. This helps you better activate the glute on your working side. Hold a cable in one hand on the same side as the foot you put on the bench. Focus on that push through the foot on the bench to drive up to standing as if a string was pulling you up by your head. That focus on the drive up using the cable will activate that glute of that working leg even more. To modify this move, use a lower bench or box. To make it even more glute intensive, use a higher box and even start on top of the box, only lowering down till your foot grazes the ground. Move number two, the staggered stand squat. Squats are a super important movement pattern that we need to train. The more that you learn to control that squatting movement, the more you can keep your knees and hips safe, healthy, and happy. The staggered stance squat variation puts an emphasis on each side independently without creating as much instability as the full single leg squat or pistol squat. Because your feet are staggered with your back foot at the instep of your front foot and the heel raised, you're making one side work harder while also reducing the impact that your ankle mobility can have on your squat depth. Limited ankle dorsiflexion or the ability to draw our toes up towards our shin can really limit our squat depth. It can lead to us not being able to squat as deep and can even put more stress and strain on our knees as all of our weight shifts forward during the squat. So the staggered stance variation might be the tweak that you need. Just make sure you're lifting the heel of the foot staggered back and focusing your weight on that fully planted leg. Don't stagger the foot too far back though and turn this into more of a lunge. You can progress this movement by adding weights, even making it more core intensive by holding a dumbbell or kettlebell up at your chest. Or you can modify this move by limiting the range of motion and sitting down to a bench or box. Move number three, the double banded hip thruster. Hip thrusters are a must do move if you wanna build strong glutes, but the barbell can be difficult to work with at times. And sometimes you want a variation that's even a better accessory move to really create that pump and burn while targeting your glute medius more. That's the beauty of the double banded hip thruster. Not only will this move work your glute max, but the mini band around your legs will also really target your glute medius to improve your hip stability. The band over your hips, which is easiest to anchor off of J-hooks in a rig or squat rack, applies even more resistance as well at the top of the movement when your glutes are the strongest. Just make sure you really drive out against the mini band as you drive up against the resistance band. You want to fully extend your hips while maintaining a posterior pelvic tilt to better engage your glutes and prevent yourself from arching your lower back and compensating. Move number four, the deficit split squat. Changing up the range of motion for a movement can impact the benefit we actually get from it. We can limit the range of motion to spend more time under tension, or we can increase the range of motion to make the movement more challenging while also helping improve our mobility and stability. With the deficit split squat, you're increasing your range of motion to help you strengthen your quads, hamstrings, and glutes, but also improve your hip flexibility and mobility. This is also a great way to vary up the Bulgarian split squat or balance lunge we often turn to. It's putting the emphasis on lifting up the front foot to increase the range of motion we move through. Just make sure you actually lower all the way down using that full range of motion. If you lift up your front foot, but you don't lunge any deeper, you aren't actually getting the full benefit of that extra range of motion. To advance the move, you can not only increase the height of what you're standing on, but also add loads. And if you're just starting out with training, you can actually limit the range of motion with the split squat as well to learn to control it by placing a block under your knee to help you learn to control that full range of motion you currently have. Move number five, 
the landmine band deadlift. Deadlifts, or a hip hinge of some form, should be included in everyone's workout routine at some point. While deadlifts so often get demonized for causing lower back pain, learning to control the hip hinge properly can actually help you avoid lower back aches and pains as you get older. They're an amazing exercise to strengthen your posterior chain and really target your glutes and hamstrings. You can further target these muscles and even force yourself to slow down the movement while progressing it by using two types of resistance, both bands and a barbell, like in the landmine band deadlift. The fix anchor of the barbell in the landmine can also be helpful as it prevents the weights from drifting forward and away from your body, like it actually can in a traditional deadlift, which can lead to lower back overload. The band applies more tension to the top of the deadlift to work the glutes even more and forces you to slow down the eccentric portion of the movement or the lowering down of the deadlift to really work those hamstrings. This is a great variation to improve your muscle hypertrophy without you trying to force a heavier load that you can't actually control. And if you don't have a landmine, you can implement two types of resistances using dumbbells instead. Move number six, the bench supported single leg deadlift. While many of us don't like the awkwardness of balance moves like the single leg deadlift, they're super key to include even though we can't lift this heavy. Working on that mind body connection to improve our balance is key to helping us avoid injury as we get older. And unilateral moves can also help us correct imbalances and improve our core stability. But if you're finding that you're not yet ready for the balance challenge of the full unilateral movement, or you wanna add heavier loads than you can when doing the full single leg deadlift, you can try the bench supported variation. This variation variation takes out some of the stability demands, which allows you to even better activate the hamstring of the standing leg. With this move, you'll put your knee of your lifted leg back on a bench. You can then press down into this knee slightly as you hinge over, pushing your butt back. But you wanna focus on really creating that tension through that standing leg. Press that standing foot down firmly into the ground and push the ground away as you drive back up to standing. If you add weights, lower the weights back towards your instep to protect your lower back and really help yourself sit your butt back as you hinge over. Move number seven, the band lean backs. While this move might not be right for you if you have knee issues limiting your ability to kneel or even knee flexion, this move is too often demonized for causing knee pain when it can actually be a key component of a rehab program. Because you're also working your quads while in hip extension, this is a great way to target the rectus femoris more than during a normal leg extension movement. And the band creates a great way to progress the basic body weight lean back and applies resistance in a different way than just holding a dumbbell up at your chest. The band forces you to really control the eccentric portion of the move or the lean back. And and then applies more resistance on your quads as you drive back up to kneeling tall and the band stretches. It makes your quads really have to work through that full range of motion. The band can also be used to modify the movement if you face the anchor point, as well add assistance to help you control the lean back. Just really make sure you're moving at your knees to lean back and not just arching your lower back. Even focus on that glute engagement through the movement to keep your hips extended. And if you really can't kneel, you can still do quad flexes while lying back on a bench. This will help you get the benefits of a hip extended position to target the rectus femoris more. Move number eight, the airborne lunge. Even without weights or equipment, we can really create workouts that challenge us. One great way to do this is by creating less of a base of support and more instability in a movement. With the airborne lunge, you're creating that instability by using only a single leg for support to balance. And even making the basic lunge more challenging because of the range of motion you can perform with this movement. This lunge can be a great way to build up towards that full pistol squat while targeting your glutes more because of the hip hinge movement pattern. When you do this exercise, you'll hinge at the hips as you bend your knees to drop that back knee to touch the ground. You don't want to touch that back foot down. Just lightly touch your knee. Make sure your front heel stays down as you touch the ground. You can then make this move even more challenging by changing up the tempo or including a slower lower down or even a pause at the bottom. To modify it, you can hold on to something Something in front of you or even place a block beneath your knee to limit the range of motion you have to control the start. Every move we include should have a purpose and be focused on our needs and goals. There's no one right exercise or one best move. There are so many ways to create variations that fit our needs and goals. And if you're focused on building muscle without getting fat, check out my can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time video next. The link's in the video description. If you like the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe. We're posting new videos each week.